I believe we're live. Just let me double check. Yes, we are live. I'm going to go ahead and share it out and tag some people right quick. Yes, ma'am. No problem. I'm on your time. That far right there. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> tag some people here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Can you hear me just fine? I hear you great, thank you. Okay, excellent, excellent. I do, you know I'm gonna have some questions for you, right? <laughs> I'm ready. You ready, okay. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for saying yes. So, um, so let me get official here. So welcome to Extra Blessed with Dr. Carmen Maria, where we inspire you to live the blessed life. And our blessed guest today is Tahi Burke, author, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and an amazing person and a mentor to many. So before we get started with my questions, because I do have them, I got questions here for you. But before we get started, can you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and take yourself off mute? Well, I grew up in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, a place called Cherry Hill. Um, it was very challenging uh, for me uh, when I grew up. I didn't have evidence of anybody that I saw when I was a kid that had success legally. So I wanted things that I wanted in life. I could not visualize having it because I didn't physically see it. But I don't know what happened along the way. I just kept, uh, you know, having a big vision, a big dream. I got in trouble a lot when I was a kid. Um, I decided not to continue down the road that most of my friends, uh, uh, after they went to, I decided to go in the military. When I went in the military, my first year in the military was a disaster. They almost kicked me out of the United States Navy. <laughs> um, it, it taught me a lot of lessons. I was growing through that time. So I decided to stick it out. I said, look, I'm, I got to win here because if I don't, I'm going to go back to Baltimore. Um, I played basketball in the Navy. I traveled all around the world playing basketball. I'm sorry, it's a helicopter. Um, and uh, also, while I was in the Navy, I started a store. I, I cut hair when I was in the Navy. I sold belts. I sold watches. So I had a business while I was in the military and playing basketball. I got stationed in uh, Indian Head, Maryland, after my four years on the Dwight D. Eisenhower, 
while I was in Indian Head, Maryland, I played all, I, I got selected to play all Navy basketball. My command stopped me from playing all Navy basketball. Two months later, I got introduced to our financial service company, which I started part-time when I was in the Navy. I built my financial service business while I was part-time. I went full-time, never had a job, never been on a job interview. Uh, I built a business uh, uh, while, when I went full-time, it took me seven, I, I struggled for a while, but it's seven to 10 years I was able to build financial independence from my financial service business. From there, I start buying real estate. I then develop a construction company and I formed, I formed the construction company with a different kind of focus than most construction companies do. I, I was expecting just to do a little bit of it, but over two years, I exploded. My, my construction company started doing over a million dollars in business. Um, we really start growing rapidly. Uh, from my construction company, I start buying more real estate. I became a landlord. I start owning real estate, start renting real estate out. Then I wrote a book called Succeed Anyway, uh, which is a manual for individuals who want to go in business for themselves and become a business owner. From there, I launched just recently a t-shirt brand called Succeed Anyway using that same platform. And I'm finishing a book right now, which is a book of quotes for entrepreneurs. These are all the quotes that I've said over the last 15 years of me being in business. And I, I always recorded every single quote that I ever said. And now I've formulated that, that, that those quotes into a book and it should be finished within the next 30 days. Oh, so we can look forward to that book of quotes that I do have your book succeeding anyway. As a matter of fact, um, one of the things I said when I was announcing this show for today is that anyone that shares during this time of us being live, that I was going to put those names in a little raffle and then raffle off the book succeed anyway, along with one of my hardcover journals as well, too. So, yeah, someone will be receiving that that shares. So those that are watching, make sure you share the broadcast because you want this book because I actually read it. It's very detailed. Very good. So now I, that we know a little bit more about you, Navy, entrepreneur, real estate. Wow, you've done a lot of things. So what does being blessed mean to you? I'm sorry, there's a little noise in the back. You said, what does what? Being blessed mean to me? Yes. Okay. It's a, it's, I can take probably three days explaining this to you. Um, but being blessed means that where you came from, the struggles that you had in the beginning stages, that God allowed you to get through those struggles. And he allowed you to be able to start accomplishing things that you want to accomplish. What happens is most people, we always talk about what's not going right with us. What's, you know, what's going bad? Why are we not this? Why are we not there? Why are we not making the kind of money this person is making? Why we don't have the home this person has? But you cannot look at the success of other people and judge your own success. So you have to be thankful, number one, for help. Number two, to be aware of your existence. There's a lot of people that's walking on this earth that's not even aware of their existence on this earth, right? So you gotta be aware of your health, be aware of your existence, and also be, uh, be thankful of the opportunities that you have in front of you to build something, to be able to impact the lives of other people, impact your community, impact your family, and impact the next generation. And also, look at this big, beautiful world out here. We have to be blessed that we were picked to be born in this world and also born in this country called the United States of America, which allows us an opportunity, uh, Carl, to have the freedom, the freedom to choose our own path. Ooh, you know what? Some people really are not aware. And um, a lot of people complain about United States, but there's a lot of people trying to get over to the United States. So, <laughs> so I found that amazing. Like they're always complaining about like more people are trying to get over here because there is such great opportunity over here. And I like what you say about being grateful. I wake up each day and I, I just have an attitude of gratefulness. I, I wake up because I'm glad to still be here and I'm glad for opportunities. So I love that. I love it. So what inspired you um, to write Succeed Anyway? That, that, that is, um, that's a very, very important question. And it was a lot into it. 
right? There's a lot that I thought about that caused me to write that book, right? And one of the things I've thought about is there's a lot of kids. When I grew up as a child, I was different. I didn't, I didn't want the path that they were teaching me. I wanted something different, but I didn't know what it was. The path that they were teaching me to me was boring. Go to school, go to college, get a job, work 40 years and retire. That was boring to me. That did not excite me, right? So when I wrote Think and Grow Rich, I thought about how I felt. And there's a lot of kids out there right now today, 15, 16, 17 years old, that if they don't get A's and B's in school, they're dismissed. If they don't say they want to go to college, nobody talks to them. But these are the ones that become business owners. So I wanted to build a manual for those kids. It's like, I want to do something different. You can start from anywhere and go in business for yourself. You can build capital along the way. You can teach people about you know, where we came from as African-Americans, not just in America, but throughout the world. And it talks about that in a manual. So it, it, I wanted to get into the schools, the colleges, the, the military installations the penitentiaries where we can teach people about entrepreneurship, about ownership, about true freedom in America. See, I believe this, that if you work a job, you are not free. The reason you're not free, they tell you when to come. They tell you when to take a lunch break. You gotta ask a grown person, is it okay to get off to go see your kids play or go to their school and go you know, to talk to their teacher? You got to ask the grown person if it's okay for you to take a vacation. I don't believe you're free if you're working for somebody. This next thing, your income is controlled by another human being. And you only get paid 24 times a year, and it's 365 days in a year. For a person to only get paid 24 times when it's 365 days, it's impossible for them to have a quality of life. That is so true. That is so true. That's a very good, that was a great motive for Right to Seed anyway, because it wasn't just about you, but impacting others and impacting exactly. future generations and impacting the neighborhood you came from. And then letting people know that, you know, now some people are meant to be on jobs because they can't handle being entrepreneurs. But for those that can, to have the opportunity to do it and have a step-by-step -step guide to do it, that's amazing. I love that. Um, okay. In what ways have you been a blessing to others? Oh my God. Number one, I would say I got three sons, you know, and all three of my sons are doing very well. So that's the first thing, you know, that I'm thankful that I have great sons that, that are doing very well for themselves. So I believe I have a, had a part in that. I was able to buy my mom a house. I was able to create a hall of fame for my community. I've been able to help so many people in business to make six figure incomes, to understand how to build wealth. We've been able to buy houses in communities, uh, bad communities and have affordable living with nice housing. Um, being able to inspire individuals to help them believe that no matter where they came from, that they can be, uh, they can be successful. But the reason that I'm able to do all of that is because I believe that God has put his hands on me. He was able to grab me and lift me up. So if he lifts me up and grabbed me the way he did, that I am obligated to be able to give back to anybody that's around me. I believe this, that no matter who is in front of you, who's around you, that you have to be willing to give of yourself to any single human being that's in your presence because you never know who's crying for help deep down inside of them. Yes, that's what I call extra blessed because um, the name of this podcast is actually extra blessed with Dr. Carmen Real because it's, you're not just blessed just to be blessed but you're blessed to be a blessing to help others as well too. And so that's why I call the extra because a lot of people think all the wealth that they get, all the knowledge they get, all the information they get is just for them, but it's not. The overflow is for you to be able to help your communities and help others around you. So that's why I call extra blessed because we're blessed to be a blessing. Wow. Now, uh, now, one of these questions you may have already answered, but I'm going I'm to give it to you anyway. What does personal freedom mean to you? Because you, you, you hit it already, but just hit it a tad little bit more. What does personal freedom mean to you? 
the number one thing about personal freedom, you can get to go, you can wake up when you want to wake up. To have the freedom to get up when you feel you had enough rest is a powerful thing in life. The next powerful thing in life is being able to go where you want to go when you want to go. To do what you do, which to do what you want to do when you want to do it. To eat what you want to eat whenever you want to eat. To give of yourself and to give to people and to be able to impact and empower other people. So personal freedom is as great as like I thought it would be is a thousand times better to be able to have that, 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 that the freedom to just do it on your own terms when you feel like doing it, not when someone else dictates that you should do it. And then here's the next thing, to be able to teach that feeling to other people that you're associated with. Yeah, I like that. Get up when you want to get up, eat when you want to eat. So speaking of food, what's one of your favorite meals that you like? Because you I probably like, have I, eaten a lot of things. <laughs> I love seafood. I don't eat, I don't eat meat. So uh, I love seafood. I love lobster. I love crab cakes. I love shrimp. I love all the, you know, the elegance. I love oysters. I love uh, 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 a lot of things that most people don't like. I like raw food. I love sushi. I love all these elegant uh, type foods because it makes me feel good. It makes my body feel good. So I try to eat things that when I eat it, it gives me pleasure. Not just to say, well, I feel full. It gives me pleasure. It gives me energy. Like um, a lot of people eat meat and I'm not against meat. But what happens is when we eat meat and consume a lot of meat, we become lazy. Like a cow, a cow doesn't move too much. So if you eat beef, what do you think is going to happen to you? You're eating the food of an animal that doesn't move too much, right? But a fish, boom, 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 right? A fish, <laughs> boom, right? But eating, right? So, uh, uh, you know, eating something that, that's always on the move, that's active. So you're feeding your body something positive so that you can have the physical energy to go after what you want. And here's, Carla, real quick. So. People have goals, dreams, and desires. They make it up in their mind, but they're not physically able to go get it. Why? Because they don't have the energy to go get it. And why they don't have the energy? Because what we feed ourselves takes away the energy necessary to go after what we want. So what I hear you saying is that what we put in our bodies determines our mobility as well too. It's a, a physical, mental, spiritual, financial. Physical, mental, spiritual, financial. So the physical part is working out, which gives you the endurance, eating proper, which gets the energy to do two things. Gives you the energy to go after what you want and also to have a quality of life. Right, if you make it, if you got millions of dollars, and you're not in good health to enjoy your life, what's the purpose of having millions of dollars? You might as well be broke in poverty. So if you have the financial means, but not the physical means, you're just as in poverty as a person that has nothing. Mm. I'm sure in that book of quotes you have that's coming out soon, there's gonna be something in there about that. <laughs> All in, all in. <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna be in there. Well, um, I do every now and then. I have to have me a good steak, but mainly I'm I love fish and chicken. And now I'm getting away from chicken. I'm tired of chicken. I'm like I'm so tired of chicken. But anyway, but um, but I'm loving on some some salmon. <laughs> it's like I just had some today when I went out to eat. I had some of that. So, what advice would you give to inspiring entrepreneurs? Okay, so number one, you got to have a burning desire got to be some deep down inside of you that's the reason why you want to be a business owner most people go into business and they think it's because they want to make money which i'll get to that in a second so number one you have to have a burning desire number two you have to have purpose when purpose is not known one second i'm sorry when purpose is not known it's inevitable i'm sorry one second 
Okay. When purpose is not known, All right, I think we're having a little technical difficulty. Uh, he just got back in the area. So uh, we'll give him just a minute to get back on here. But thus far, I'm telling you, he has dropped so many nuggets on this podcast thus far as to uh, things that could help you be successful, things that help you to be and live the blessed life and things that um, help you be a blessing to others. And I've just been gleaming off everything that he's been saying, and hopefully he'll be able to get back in uh, to finish up this uh, interview. But uh, hopefully you have enjoyed it thus far. Uh, make some comments. Uh, let me go ahead and check the feed and see and make sure that we're actually still streaming live. And I believe that we are. So as soon as he gets back on, we'll continue with the interview. And thank you all for watching. You're on mute. So number two is purpose. Okay, so number, number one was the burning desire, right? Burning desire. Okay. Number two, two is purpose. purpose. Without purpose, without purpose, you will not accomplish anything. Number three, you have to have a plan. Your plan must be detailed as to what you want to accomplish. To burning desire, purpose, plan, detailed strategy. What do you ex what do you want to do? How do you want to do it? Your game plan to get it done. And number four, for entrepreneurs, you got to be willing to be different. You got to be willing to be different. You got to be willing to accept criticism and keep moving. You got to be willing to put in a work and keep moving. You got to do what most people won't so you can have what most people don't. You got to work on holidays. I know you don't like to hear that. <laughs> you got to work on weekends. See, I worked on enough holidays and enough weekends where any day is a weekend for me and any day is a holiday for me right now. Okay. So all the things like if you want to be a business owner, be willing to get faced with defeat. Be willing to start over again. Be willing to overcome major adversity. But understand one thing. I want to say this last thing about a business owner. As great as you think it is to be free, as great as you think it is to be able to control your life and deliver for others, the rewards are a thousand times better. Wow, 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 wow. And I know you talk a lot about the plan because you said, you know, that they got to have, that there has to be a plan. Basically, you gave three Ps. Okay. And, uh, but the plan part, what I have noticed in your uh, entrepreneur's manual succeed anyway is that you actually ask questions and help and help someone actually develop a plan so they can be successful. Yeah, in that manual, uh, Carla, it breaks down goals, how to formulate goals. It breaks down how to formulate a plan in detail. And it gives exactly what I did in order to accomplish the things that I wanted. So, I mean, although the book, the manual is like 80 something pages, but it is like, no, like it's not, you know, most manuals that take a long time to get to the point, all my <laughs> chapters, they get to the point. They get to the point about planning, get to the point about goal setting, get to the point about, you know, strategizing and hanging around the right people or things of that nature. Okay, speaking about hanging around the right people, how important do you feel it is to hang around certain people? Like some people want to try to take all their friends with them on the journey. What do you say about that? Well, I'm tell you something. Your shoulders only so heavy. 
I know you got, I know people got big shoulders, but they're only so heavy. If you continue to carry the weight, the weight will drag you down. Sooner or later, you got to be around somebody that's willing to do the same thing you're willing to do. Yes. Isn't that even to the point about when I first came to DC, I used to drive around and look at big houses. And I said, one day I want to, I want to do that. One day I'm going to live in a house like that. One day somebody's going to drive by my house and they're going to drive slow and look at my house. I used to hang with a guy called Bullet Bob Turley. Some of you guys Google him. He passed away. May God rest his soul. He played for the New York Yankees. He won five World Series rings. He played with Mickey Mantle and all those guys. I used to go to his house in Marco Island, Florida with another guy named Andy Young. Andy was making 500,000 at the time. Bob was making 1.5 million. He was a multimillionaire. I used to spend time with him at 21 and 22 and 23 and 24 and 25 years old and sit by his pool and listen to those guys talk about business. And Bob Turley used to always say, cash is king, Tahi, cash is king. Make sure you have cash, cash is king. So I, you've got to be around people that can stretch your vision. People say, well, I'm okay. Well, you only gonna be as okay as your mind gonna take you. And if your mind is not expanded, it ain't going too far. You can be going here to the next block and back home. But if you hanging around somebody that traveled the world and got a big vision, big goals, big dreams, and accomplish some things, they're going to help elevate you to the next level. Okay, Tahi, that all sounds good, really, really good. But what about those who are able to hang around someone that has already made it? You say, what about those that's able to or not? That's not able to. What if, what if there's someone that's not able to hang around someone that's already made it? How do they get the mentorship that they need? I went on, I went, I watched the lifestyle of the rich and famous when I was a kid. I watched the lifestyle of the rich and famous when I was a kid. And that is why I wanted to be something special. I saw Robin Leach talk about the cars, talk about the hotels, talk about the caviar. These places I've never been in my life. But he brought it home to me. Today we have YouTube. You don't have to go see somebody. You can bring them to you. You can bring these big leaders to you. You can hang around them. You can experience what they felt. You can experience what they went through. They can talk to you about how they built the business. You can experience the quality of life. You can bring it to your home. Okay. Then take that and you can go become bigger and make yourself known, and then people want to be around you. Okay, very good answer. So in closing, what would you like to leave with our listening audience? I want to say this. It's the thought of the thing, not the thing itself, that is the most difficult. What do I mean by that? The reason most people don't succeed is they think about it too much. They think about all the adversity, all the setbacks. What if I don't make it? When I was a kid, I, I wanted to skate so bad. But I think about, well, what if I go skating out there and I fall? And I skated on a porch, round and round and round, round and round and round on my own porch. Then I finally got off the porch and I started skating outside. When I first started playing basketball, I played basketball, I used to shut the door in my mom's house and we used to ball up socks and play basketball and shoot in the corner. That was our court. Then I used to shoot when we had this little little thing, uh, a window well outside my mom's house. And we used to shoot out there with a little valley ball. Then we had a net right up there with a telephone pole and we should shoot there. And then I started going to the recreation center and I shot there. So what happens is it evolves things evolve. So what happens is when you think about how difficult a task is, you'll never do it. But once you do it, you say, you know what? This wasn't that bad. Playing basketball wasn't that bad. Skating wasn't that bad. Making a phone call wasn't that bad. Sending an email wasn't that bad. 
having this interview with somebody to talk about my business and what I do, it really wasn't that bad. It's the thought of the thing, not the thing itself, that is the most difficult. And the longer you think, the less you do. Woo! Okay, you dropped so many nuggets that I just don't know what to say, but thank you. <laughs> oh, but thank you so much. And I, I apologize for being late. And I apologize if it was noise in the background for everybody, but I hope that I share something that could benefit at least one person. And I believe you did. For those that were watching or those that will be watching replay, this has been Extra Blessed with Dr. Carla Maria, where we inspire you to live the blessed life. Our blessed guest today was Tahi Burke, who is blessed to be a blessing. Until next week, God bless. Peace Thanks, out. Carla. Have a good night. Thank you. <laughs>